When we look at the business of creativity, we have to take into account dimensions such as production, distribution, logistics and retail. So let's um, talk about some examples here of what I mean. One, you know, simple one is how people sell crafts, arts and crafts, through galleries and shops. This uh, adds an extra dimension to the whole business because um, for the producer of arts and crafts, they simply see the, you know, the gallery as a customer and indeed the, cust you know, the gallery is a customer. But you could also say that the gallery is simply a route to the real customers, the end user or buyer. And so using this route has many advantages, of course, but some disadvantages. The advantages are that the gallery will have, um, you know, a, a beautiful place that attracts people. It will have its own regular customers. Uh, it's an establishment for selling exactly the things that we're producing. So that's great. But of course, they are commercial too and they need to take a commission or a, a slice of the profits and that can either reduce our the profit or the income that we get after the gallery has taken its cut or we need to increase our prices to the end user to allow for a profit for the gallery and then for us as well so it does change the economics the other thing that concerns me as a negative is that we as producers, as the creative business, don't actually have a direct connection with the end user. So it's much more difficult to get feedback about what people like or dislike, what their reaction is, what they want, how we can improve what we do. Because, you know, the customer is the customer of the gallery, not ours. And the gallery is going to be reluctant to tell us exactly who they are so that we can, even so that we can contact them for feedback because that also provides an opportunity for us to sell to them directly if they bought something through the gallery. So there's a little bit of tension there, uh, which we need to acknowledge in the relationship between ourselves as producers and you know, galleries and shops and on all kinds of retailers um, in the creative industries. And this would apply not just to arts and crafts and galleries, but to all kinds of, of different settings. And I remember advising a young woman who was very skillful at making wedding dresses. And she had an opportunity to uh, sell her dresses through a wedding dress shop, which she was very excited about. And of course, she had to offer um, a commission or a, a discount, uh, a cut in other words, to the, the shop owner. And she did offer the cut and the shop owner took her dresses. But actually, um, she didn't sell any because she was getting more profit from other people's dresses than from the, my, my clients. So once we understood this, we looked again at our pricing. We increased the prices to the end user in such a way that we could offer a bigger profit margin to the retailer. And now the retailer was promoting her dresses above other people's. And yet my client was still making the same amount of money. So we need to calculate into the, you know, the business, the, the effect, positive and negative, and all the complications of dealing through galleries and shops and other retailers. So there I'm talking about arts and crafts and, and you know, designer fashion, but this would apply also to selling games and apps through the app stores on Google, where again, you know, whether it's Google or Apple, they will take a commission. We have to factor that in. Um, we might decide that that's well worth paying because they can reach other people we can't. And so we have to fit in with their systems. And it's a choice, of course. We don't have to do any of these things, but these are typical models that people do use and we need to factor into our prices um, and to indeed time scales and the rules and regulations and contracts that we have with the distributors and retailers about this. We can also look at how we might outsource production. And this is happening a lot in the creative industries. Um, a lot of software is developed, you know, by coders in India and then, you know, incorporated into software in Australia or Europe or United States. So, you know, outsourcing happens a lot. 
there are a whole you know um, platforms of outsourcers or platforms that outsourcers and suppliers use um, not least in the creative industries so you know designers uh, illustrators all kinds of creative people are selling their services through um, different platforms um, at attractive prices that are still profitable for them so we can outsource production or services in that way and we've all heard especially in recent times about how you know supply chains might be disrupted because so many businesses including creative ones are getting their products or components from other parts of the world so outsourcing production totally or a combination of uh, assembly and uh, sourcing products and uh, components is often part of the the creative industries business models when it comes to production and then you know we can have different setups or um, business models if you like uh, around all kinds of things and it takes me back to my days about book distribution where we were the distributor of books on behalf of 20 or more publishers um, we had the relationship with the shops we charged the shops the shops paid us we had to chase the money sometimes but the physical distribution and delivery was outsourced uh, subcontracted by my company to a, a book distributor who was also distributing and delivering books for many other publishers so they could achieve the economies of scale that we couldn't we subcontracted all that physical movement of books to them and it worked very well um, so that we could concentrate on selling and dealing with the money side of uh, distribution um, as book distributors without having to deal with the physical distribution so that worked all round it was a win-win and this is you know another example of how uh, logistics and retail and distribution happens in the creative industries and finally I reflect back on my time in book distribution um, and indeed before that in book publishing when we could foresee a time where short run book printing was becoming possible one of the problems of publishing used to be how many do you print because in a way you want to print a lot of books um, because then you get the economies of scale and the unit cost comes down but there's a real danger of printing too many if you print a small cautious number then the you know the print costs per unit go up and if you then repeat um, you know keep ordering small quantities it's not very efficient from a, a profit point of view so how do you get that balance and this was a real nightmare for me when I worked in publishing deciding exactly how many books we should print and of course <laughs> the other thing is that as soon as the book comes back from the printers despite all the uh, proofreading you've done there's always one typo at least and you can't change it then because you printed 20,000 books so it's too late so it was a dream almost a fantasy like some kind of science fiction thing to think that one day in the future we might get to a stage where we can just print books one at a time and if we want to amend a book because we have spotted a typo or we've got a new review that we want to include in the book we can just amend the file and print you know a new version um, as sales go along and that is actually happening now that's now the reality with print-on-demand publishing and it's a dream because it's low risk uh, it works for the um, the publisher and the author of course but it also works for the the distributor because they can simply print as many books as are required at any one time and this is the case with one of my books chase one rabbit and you'll see on Amazon that it says paperback is in stock and that's true you can get hold of a copy immediately but it's not quite true because they don't stock piles or pallets full of physical books they have a, a digital file which can be changed at any time and they produce one or a thousand copies per day depending on on demand so this is another uh, great step forward I think 
um, that we've made, certainly in book publishing. And, sim and it's just one example of how we can use modern technology, how printing in this instance, but how other technologies and industries are improving so that we can uh, develop and enhance the way that we produce, we distribute, retail, and the whole logistics of business in the creative and cultural industries.